Genesis 17 and verse 10. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. shall be signed the covenant between me and ye, you. He who is eight, years, eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generation, he who is born in your house or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant. He was born in your house, he was bought with your money, must be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. 26 verse, or 24 verse of the same chapter. And Abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael's son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And that very same day, Abraham was circumcised his son Ishmael, and all the men of his house, bought in the house, or bought with money from a farm, was circumcised with him. Exodus 12 chapter. I'm going to read my text so you can sit down, because when I start preaching, I'm just going to preach from it. Exodus 12 chapter. Exodus, the very next book in the Bible. Exodus 12 chapter. Come on, say it's in. Say it's in. The covenant. Exodus 12 chapter. Let me get there. Exodus 12 chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brother. Yes, ma'am, sister. Come on, Exodus 12, chapter. And it says, uh, Say, find it, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Seven verse. 12 and 7. Look, look at the sixth verse. Now, keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Go, go back to the fifth verse. I'm sorry. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. They take it from the sheep or from the goats. You should keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. Then take some of the blood and put it on two doorposts on the length of the house where they eat. Say, so put the blood on the door toes. On the door to, on the doorpost. Yes, yes, yes. And then on 23rd verse. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and we seize the blood on the lintel. And on the two doorposts, the Lord shall pass over the door. And will now allow the straw to come to your house to strike you. See the 23rd verse? 12th chapter. When the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, we seize the blood on the lintel on the two doorposts. The Lord will pass over the door and not allow the straw to come to your house to strike you. Amen. Exodus 24, I'm going real fast. Exodus 24, verse 8. Come on, I'm trying to give you. But, but, but um, Minister Barnett, I'm going to mess with you. Can I give them two sermons and in, 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 make up for two Sundays in one sermon? They're going to say, no, 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 no. Don't preach that long. Come on. I'm not going to preach that long. I'm going to mess with y'all. Exodus 24, verse 8. And Moses took the blood, sprinkled on all the people. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled on all the people. Come on, how many people is it? About a million people. 600, 660,000 foot soldiers along with the women and children. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled on, sprinkled on the people and said, this is the blood of the covenant the Lord has made according to all these words. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. We just read it. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. 28. But this is my blood, a new covenant, which is shared for many for remissions of sin. For this is the blood of the new covenant. My blood, a new covenant, was shared for many for remission of sins. Hebrews 9. Hebrews 9. Amen. You know, back growing up in church, the preacher would preach a little while, stop, and let somebody read. Read. No, I'm not going to do that tonight, this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews 9. Amen. Verse 11. Say Hebrews 9. Verse 11. But Christ came as a high priest of good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle and not made with hands that are not of his, his creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood. He entered the most holy place once of all, having obtained eternal redemption. I'm at the 13th verse, Hebrews 9. For if the bloods of bulls, goats, and ash of heifers sprinkling unclean sacrifice for purifying the flesh, how much more then shall the blood of Christ 
who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. First John 1, you're going to sit down now. First John 1, he said he got to the back. Say he got to the back. Say he got to the back. They said, oh, he's going to sit down now. He got to the back. Amen. <laughs> First John 1, can I get there? Say get there, preacher. First John 1. I know how to quote it, but I'm going to get the right one for you. Right verse. First John 1, verse uh, 9. For we confess our sins. He is faithful. Come on. And just forgives our sins and cleanses what? From all unrighteousness. Look at the seven verses. I want it. We walk in the light. He's in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, what? Cleanses us from all sin. We say we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth not us. We confess to our sins. He is faithful and just forgive our sins and cleanse what? From all unrighteousness. Say the blood still works. I said all that to say that. Say the blood still works. Say the blood still works. You may be seated. Amen. So now you got all the texts. So when I start going fast and get crazy and everything, you can refer back to the text. Sister Vanessa has it written down inside of the uh, inside of the uh, broadcast in case you want to go back and watch it. So the blood still works. I'm sorry for all that typing, Sister Vanessa. The blood still works. Abraham stood before God. And God says, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. I changed name from Abram to Abraham. But I got to make covenant with you, Abraham. And what you got to do, you got to draw the first blood. Abraham went in and drew the first blood for us. He's 99 years old, and God says, I got to clean you up. I told you to walk and follow me. You went and got Ishmael, but hey, God, I've got to fix this thing. You've got to make covenant, so now you got to cut off the foreskin, circumcise yourself at 99 years old, and draw the first blood. I believe that that act of faith, that he did that, is what got him ready to have a baby. Because the Bible says we're going to next week, we're going to talk about Abraham was good as dead, but God brought him back to life. That brought him back to life, just believing, obeying God. By saying, I'm going to draw the first blood. And he circumcised himself. See, at eight days years old, you don't know what's happening. But at 99 years old, you know what's happening, and you feel it what's happening, and you know it happened, and it hurt it happened. Say 99 years old. You know what's happening. You feel what's happening. It hurt what happened, and you know what happened. And every male man that was with him, and Ishmael was 13 years old. All of them drew the first blood. Say first blood. But established covenant with God. That every Jew, every Hebrew born after that had to be circumcised. Now we do circumcision. By choice of family, whether he, whether whether a parent wanted him to or not, it's nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with covenant with God. But it set a precedence of first blood, say first blood. In other words, the covenant is always signed in blood. God's covenant is signed in blood. I had a friend of mine, he's a minister, my God brother, my best friend growing up. He said, it's a bloody religion. Now, I don't believe in religion. I believe in relationship. But he was making a thing that the, the walk with God, somebody had to do something. Some blood had to come from somewhere. It starts with Abraham drawing. So Abraham drew the first blood. The Israel went into Egypt for 400 years. God says to Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh would say, yes, then he would renege. Say yes, he will renew. Blackness on the earth, locusts on the earth, flies on the earth, uh, drought was in the land, blood was in the water, all kind of darkness, everything was happening. And he said, oh, every time, no, 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 no. God says, You know what's about to happen now? I'm about to kill every firstborn of the Egyptians. You're going to let them go now. But I can't send the death angel indiscriminately. Among my people. I've got to have something to block the death for my people. 
Find you the first year lamb, whether it's a goat or a, lamb, a sheep. Take it for 14 days. Sacrifice that lamb. Get it prepared to eat. But take the blood of the lamb and put it on your doorpost. And when the angel, the devil angel, sees the blood, I'm passing over. Cover it with the blood. And that night, everybody who had the blood on the doorpost, if the Egyptians would have known that it got some of that blood, it would pass over their house too. Because, see, God has no respect to person. But they didn't know the secret that the blood still works. And everywhere the deaf angel went, there was blood applied to the doorpost. Blood applied to the doorpost. Blood applied to the doorpost. He would pass over, say Passover. That's why it's called a Passover lamb. But it was a type and shadow. I keep telling you, everything in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant is a type and shadow pointing to the New Testament, New Covenant. The Passover lamb is representing Christ. The blood on the doorpost represents the blood, come on, the blood of Jesus Christ. He passed over and passed over and passed over and passed over. And Pharaoh said, y'all got to go. Because his firstborn child died and all the other Egyptians. You know the story. Let him go, chased him out to the Red Sea and drowned in the Red Sea. They got out into the wilderness. And God says, I need you to set up a tabernacle of worship for me. And I need to give you my covenant in the law. But before I give you my covenant in the law, that's Exodus 24th chapter, I need you to kill some heifers, some bulls, that's cows. And I'm not, I'm not using that, that word like folk use in the streets. Some, I'm from the country. so But the Bible says heifers and cows. Uh, Passed up there, call people heifers. No, 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 I ain't saying all that. I'm, 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 I'm aware that folk use language the wrong way. Some bulls and some, that's some she cows, heifer, okay? So heifer and bulls and lambs and goats and take the blood. Sprinkle it on the people. And they come up and talk to me. If you keep reading the 24th chapter, then him and the 70 elders went up to talk to God and God didn't strike them. But he told Moses, come a little higher with you and Joshua. And Joshua fell like a dead man, slain in the spirit. And God gave Moses the law. But before he went up to see God, he sprinkled all of them with the blood. Say the blood. The blood was cleansing them. Say the blood was cleansing them. The blood was purifying them. And every time you bought any article in the tabernacle, you had to sprinkle it with blood first. You would think it was sprinkled with bleach, right? They would mix it with something called his, which is something like bleach of his branch. They would mix it with the blood, but they have the blood on it. You would think they would mix with water, but no, he had to use blood to cleanse it. Because it was representing something. Then came Jesus. And Isaiah said in the 53rd chapter, who would believe our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord been revealed? We wouldn't even look upon him like a sheep. Come on, led to the slaughter. He opened not his mouth. Didn't say a mumbling word. He was wounded for our transgressions. Bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by stripes He was prophesying about Jesus. John saw Jesus. That's why I read all the scriptures so I could tell it like a story. But John saw Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Revelation 5 says that Nobody's worthy to open the seals. Nobody could tell open. It says, who is worthy to open up the end time? What's going on? It's the only one was worthy. The lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Let me say it this way. In the mind of God, Jesus died for us before Adam was even created. 
The lamb was already slain. He already made provision for us before the world began. So it's in the covenant. In other words, he had in the covenant already written in before time, in eternity, that if man messed up, already got him. If Adam sinned, already got him. If they need, come on, some cleansing agent, already got it. If they need a sacrifice, they already got it. And by the time Jesus came on the scene, every Sabbath day, perhaps you and I would have to line up in the line. You bring your pigeon, I bring my turtle dove. You bring your goat, I bring my lamb. I gave you a goat, I had a lamb. You bring your bull, okay, I'll bring a helper. I won't let you go there, huh? <laughs> I'm clowning, brother. I like the best brother I have. I'm bringing, in other words, we had to come every Sabbath day. Lord, I sin. Sunday through Friday, I couldn't get it right. Here I come. Here's the sacrifice I bring. Here's the blood that shed. Somebody say somebody. Something had to die. Say something had to die. Some blood had to be shed. And then we get up on the next morning, a morning on Sunday morning in our time. See, they were worshiping on Saturday. And on Sunday morning, still them being in worship, they was out there sinning all over again. Couldn't help themselves. And Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, of course, their days wasn't called, we call them. But I'm telling you, the first day of the week, the second day of the week, the third day of the week, the fourth day of the week, the fifth day of the week, the sixth day of the week, they couldn't get it right. But on the Sabbath day, here they come again. Bringing some other blood to be shed. Here come Jesus on the scene. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I know we had Easter a few months ago when they took Jesus and brought him in. They wounded him. They slapped him in the face. Spit on him and say, who did it? Prophesy. Took a crown of thorns. You know where the thorns came from? Where thorns come from? The only plant I've seen thorns come from, besides a bristle book, is roses. For every rose, there's a lot of thorns. They took thorns. Picked out the best part, the rose, and left the thorns. Think about that. How life will take the best part away from you and leave thorns. But he took our place with the crown of thorns on his head. Bleeding, say bleeding in the head. Then they took him and they said, go and crucify him. And Pilate says, okay, you got the whipping for you, crucify him. You got to break him all the way down. And what they take is what you call cat nine. That's a whip with some steel in it. And they give you 39 stripes. You can die from that. I bet I would have. Because I'm only 166 pounds. You give me 39 strikes, I'm out of there. I can't take it. Only my will would keep me alive because I got a strong will. But my body would be out of there. 39 strikes. Come on. My strikes will what? Wounded for our transgressions. Bruised. One, say one. Two, that's two places. I'm going somewhere. They brought him out to the cross. They have to nail him hand and feet. Every human being, if they have a, that's not, you know, not empathy, has two hands and what? Two feet. Three, four, five, six places. Bleed and say bleeding for you and I. Say it's in the covenant. It's signed. Say the covenant is signed in blood. But the Bible says that one of his bones will be broken. So let me tell you why. When they crucify you, it's supposed to be for days. Watch this movie called Spartacus. I don't know if y'all watch TV. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a history teacher, so I watch all that old stuff. Spartacus, if man go down the road, they crucify him. Folk, he comes seven days later, they still on the cross. Because you're supposed to die a slow, torturous death. But then what happened is, it's Passover. It says Passover. So it's no incident, no accident that God had Jesus be crucified before the Passover. Because he is the Passover lamb. 
but they got to get him off the cross before the Passover. So they go to the other two thieves, the thieves on each side, they said they're not dead, so to make them die quicker, break their bones. They came to Jesus. He'd already died. My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? I thirst. They gave him sour vinegar and wine to drink. It is finished, say it is. Say it is finished. He completed the work on the cross. Into your hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. So to say he's already dead. So he pierced him in the side. And blood and water flowed. Oh, good God Almighty. Say one place on his head. Two places on his back. Three in the right hand. Four in the left hand. Five places in the right foot. Six places in the left foot. But in the seventh place, say seventh place. Uh, they pierced him in the side. Seven's God's number for completion. He led in seven places uh, so you can be saved, uh, healed, uh, delivered, uh, set free. Uh. Come on, say he bled uh, in seven places. The blood, say the blood, still, say the blood. Still works. Blood and water flowed out. He said, truly this man is the son of God. But he didn't stay in the tomb. Early on the first day of the week, he got up with all power in his hand. And that's why you and I come on the first day of the week and we say what Jesus says. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. The blood I'm shed is for the New Testament. I'm shedding my blood for new covenant. No more goats, no more bulls, no more heifers, no more turtle doves. Because I shed my blood once and for all, for all mankind, for all eternity. And the blood still works. Say the new covenant, New Testament. So the writer of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, it, they don't give they don't give you the name of the writer of Hebrews. I love to mess with that. Most theologians want to say it's Paul, because it sounds like because Paul is very learned, right? But Paul had folk that were up under him that he talked. Folk like Timothy, you know where I'm going, Brother Travis. You heard me already with this. Titus, all those kind of people. But then he also taught Priscilla. And she was a woman. It could be Priscilla. They don't want to give, you know, they don't want to give the women. No, no, no. I don't know who it is, but the writer of Hebrews said, but Christ came as a high priest of good things to come a greater, more perfect tabernacle. tabernacle. Here's what happened. When Brother Hal and I came every Sabbath day and bought that sacrifice, the priest would put it all on the altar and burn it. Then he would go into the most holy place. Only he can go in there with some bells on him. Because if he wasn't right, he'll die. They have to back up there and grab that straw string and pull him out of there. He go there once every year and bring a sacrifice for all of us. And when the blood hits the mercy seat, the whole Congregation, the whole city, the whole community, everybody saved when the blood hits the mercy seat. But Christ said, Christ went through the holy place. Because on the day that he died, the Bible says the veil of the temple tore from the top to the bottom. Say 40 feet high. It tore from the top to the bottom. And he went in once and for all. For all the blood of bulls and goats and Help of the, none, of, none of that didn't work, but his blood, say his blood, made the final redemption. Say, Jesus, you know I was going to preach this, paid it all, all to him all. Sin and left a crystal stain, he washes white as snow. I don't have the money to do it. I can't pay for my deliverance. I can't pay for my salvation. I can't pay for my redemption. I can't work for it. I can't live morally right for it. I can't give another good deed for it. I can't do another good stuff for Jesus. Paid it all. 
Just one drop of his blood uh, cost me and me and me the soul to be saved. Jesus paid it all. Uh, all to him and all. Sin and left. Prince of shame. Prince of me red. But when the red blood of Jesus uh, touched my red sin, it washes white as snow. Uh, so the blood still works. 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 For the blood, blood of bulls and goats, the ashes of heaven, the spring of the unclean sacrifice, for the purifying of flesh. But much, much, how much more would the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve a living God. Say, God's not dead. He's still alive. And the blood is still working. That blood still saves me. Still heals me. Still delivers me. Just one drop of his blood will make me whole. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Paid it all. So John comes and says, listen, to walk in the light, he's in light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Pastor, I thought because I did all the right stuff, I'm getting to heaven. You can do all the right stuff for the wrong reasons. And Isaiah 64 and 8 says, all your own righteousness is filthy rags. The only thing that saves you is what Jesus did. And what he did was shed his blood. And the blood cleanses us from all what? Then the very next verse says, if you say you have no sin, because see, what we got caught up in was that um, we live, what we save? I no more sin in my life. No, 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 no. First of all, there's sins of commission and sins of omission. I understand the doctrine. The doctor is trying to say that you're free from the bondage of sin. You're free from the enemy controlling your life. But if you omit, God says we got to go out and tell the whole world. How many of you go out and tell the whole world about Jesus? The Lord says that we do. There's a lot of stuff the Bible tells us to do about fasting more. Pray without ceasing. Be angry and sin not. The list can go on and on. That we know we fall short. Huh. Come on. That's why every day you pray, Father, forgive me our what? Debts and forgive what? Others are what? Their debts. Well, Pastor, how am I saved? I'm glad you asked. If we say we have no sin, we lie the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sin, let me. Let me I didn't mean to do Bible study. Their sin, their faults, and their deeds. The deeds you do is the stuff that's the consequence of sin. You do a deed. Brother Barham, leave you alone, Mr. Brother Barnett. Barnett, I believe you can handle this. If I punch Brother Barnett in the face for nothing, that's a bad deed. I didn't want to do that, Brother Hal. Brother Barnett, I believe you know I'm. I'm because he's athletic. He played basketball. So why they're playing basketball? I got to make it clean it up, Brother Travis. We're playing basketball. Brother Barnett could take me to the hole. He's seven years old. He could take me to the hole. My knee's bad. I get mad, Brother Barnett. I pop, quit. I, that's a deed I did. But the deed was wrong based on the fault I had of getting angry too fast. The sin nature is that I've got to control, come on, my attitude. But we confess my sin. Father, my sin is, come on, I have the wrong attitude sometimes. It makes me angry, and I sin. And my deed is, I hit brother, what you call him? Brother Barnett. Brother Barnett, please forgive me for hitting you. I forgive you, brother. But God going to tell me, you need to confess your sin to me that you need to get your attitude straight, Riggins. Right? But what cleanses me? The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me. If we say we have no sin, we lie the truth not in us. But we confess our sins, he's favor and just clear us and forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all what? Unrighteousness. Say the blood still works. So I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. So I plead, 
I plead the blood. Good God Almighty. So I plead the blood. I get that from my mother's aunt. My mother's great aunt. Say my mother's great aunt. She lived down here by Humble, behind the house in City Gas. Y'all know what City Gas is, right? Come on. We want I want to take over City Gas with this church one day. Yeah, but ain't Martha. She was apostolic. Say apostolic. Apostolic people, they wore white to church all the time. Just like this thing. With a white beanie cap head on their head. And peanut butter stockings and a shirt off, skirt all the way down here. And then a mark was so apostolic that the furniture in the house was white. And she was so clean, she put plastic on the furniture. We come by to visit, nobody can't sit on the furniture. She said, Hey, Mabel, all y'all saved. Hey, Mabel, you got that accent from Louisiana down here in Humble and City. Again. Hey, Mabel, all the boys saved. Because if they not saved, I plead. The blood, I said, I plead the blood. And what I want to tell you, what's gonna happen here? The way we're gonna change city gas, the way we're gonna change Chidwell and Home Homestead, the way we're gonna change Wayside and, and Lay Road, the way we're gonna change Fifth Water, the way we're gonna change uh, Third Water, the way we're gonna take over the Heights and Fourth Water. We gotta say, I plead. I plead the blood. Say the blood still works. How are we going to save our children that don't want to go to school? Acting a fool. Know all this TikTok and Rick Rock and can't do it right. I plead the blood. The way we're going to save our community from gangs and from corruption and from Blood dealers, I plead, I plead the blood. The way we're gonna save our churches is trying to be invaded by homosexuality and corrupt living. I plead, I plead the blood. You gotta plead the blood, cause the blood still works. The blood that reaches the high mountain, the blood that flows. To the Lord Valley, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it shall never lose its powers. I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. I plead the blood when I'm sick in my body. I plead the blood when my mind is confused. I plead the blood when I'm tired and I want to go no farther. I plead the blood when I don't know what's going on. Cause the blood still, so the blood still, the blood still works. It's in the covenant. And I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead the blood. Close with this. Over time, we sing too much, you run out of time to preach. I have a friend in Africa, Bishop Christian Kawia. Met him through Bay Ridge Christian Colleges, be the dean of students. He's over 30 churches over there. In Africa, they walk 10 miles, 20 miles. Sometimes, some people walk 10 hours to get to church. And the crowds are not 20, 25. Crowds of 20,000, 25,000. That's how they have church. Because the revival and the crusades over there is because they're fighting against demonic warfare, witches, <sighs> Muslim, Islam, rather, politics, corrupt politics. They're fighting. They, 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 if they don't have Christ, they're going to go to something else. We might take out their life. And we'll be preaching sometimes. In the middle of the service, somebody demonic would jump up, trying to take over, scaring folk, all that kind of stuff. He said, all these hollers, I plead the blood of Jesus. When he starts how I plead the blood of Jesus, stuff start running and getting out of the way. Now, I'll be honest with you. We go over there because our faith now, we'll be scared. First of all, you'll be scared to walk 10 miles because think a lion going to jump on you. Right? A rhino, rhino may run over you. And then you get there and all the people jumping around in another language singing and praising God. Then somebody get in the middle of it trying to act a fool. All you got to do is plead the blood of Jesus. In your life. Every now and then in your life. With all hell break loose. That's in the Bible. I learned it from his daddy. 
that's in the Bible. Am I right? <laughs> they were off the call one time, and I'll tell you about it one day. But all hell breaks loose. You got to plead the blood. When the fire is hot, you got to plead the blood. When the water's trying to drown you, you got to plead the blood. When your life is all confused, I plead the blood of Jesus. I know about being filled with the Holy Spirit that's going to be in the covenant. I know about peace and joy, but it starts with it was paid, say it was paid for by the blood of Jesus. He paid and say he paid it all by the blood of Jesus. And I paid the blood. It's communion Sunday. Those of you watching live or archive on Facebook, you see a preacher going crazy talking about blood. I'm not talking about the blood you get from chicken. I'm not talking about no blood that's running out of your beef meat ain't cooked right. I'm not talking about you cut your finger. I'm talking about Jesus. God on Calvary's cross for a sinner like you and I. And the blood still works. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're saved. The Bible says Romans 10, 9 to 13. Everyone calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The confession about the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead, you will be saved. For the heart man believes, the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for your son Jesus who died for a sinner like me. I thank you for him shedding his blood on Calvary. And I believe you raised him from the dead. Save me, Jesus. Wash me. Make me whole. I receive this by saying. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Just that simple. He said, Pastor, why is it just that simple? Because one of those thieves on the side of Jesus said, Lord, remember me. He says, the day you'll be me. That's all he had to pray. But we know what we're praying about. We're praying about that he paid that cost. Died for us in our place. And God resurrected him. Find your Bible teaching church. To become a member of growing the things of God. If you're on the north side of Houston, anywhere greater, if you can get over here, 6555 Mason Drive. Houston, Texas, 77028. United Covenant Hope Church of God. Sunday mornings, 11 a.m. Come and worship us. If you don't want to come here, find your Bible to the church somewhere. Growing the things of God. Because the blood still works.